Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Philippine storms presently happening here. Uh, we've got floods, we've got landslides, and I'm uh, going to get into a little bit of the weather information uh, about the Philippines a little bit later as well. Uh, this particular day and night, it's, 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 uh, we're in, I think we're going into day five or maybe even six already. I'm, I'm starting to lose track um, of cloudy, rainy weather. And it's part of a couple of storm systems coming in from the east across the Pacific and the Philippine Sea and uh, low pressure systems that are increasing in strength. And the good news is that uh, uh, later this evening or sometime tomorrow, the larger storm further out in the Philippine Sea is supposed to turn north and suck this present smaller storm, smaller but it's providing a, a way too much rain uh, and flooding results in flooding and landslides uh, it's going to suck it back out and away from uh, this area and uh, in the coming few days we should have more clear more dry weather this is downtown Cebu City uh, about uh, gosh maybe nine o'clock ten o'clock at night something like that I had uh, had a little dinner with some friends and uh, a couple drinks, and I like to I like to take walks and just see what's going on in the city. And you've got your uh, I didn't see any particular flooding uh, in the areas that I walked in downtown area, uh, but there are certain streets that always get flooded. And what happens? The trash on the streets oftentimes it will plug up the drains. And especially if it's high tide, if the tide, the water is high where the drains go out into the ocean, uh, that drainage is slower and it backs up. It can back up into certain parts of the city. Something you want to consider when you, when you choose a place to live. Many of the same areas that get, got hit by Super Typhoon Odette back in December 16th and 17th uh, are receiving additional rain here. It's, it's four months later, but uh, the ground in many areas is still saturated. Um, I think the mayor of Cebu City declared a state of calamity, and which means they can forcibly evacuate certain parts that uh, are, will regularly flood. Over on Leyte Island, uh, east of Cebu, they've had a large, uh, very large landslide, and I believe that it's wiped out uh, many, many houses there, and uh, I think over 20 people and more uh, have been killed so far. I have not found any really good uh, weather apps on my phone. I've tried many over the years. Um, I've got one called One Weather Now. I guess it's as good as any, but uh, not real accurate. Most of the time, much of the time, <laughs> as you know, weather is rather unpredictable. And uh, anyway, there is a there is a, a site on YouTube, and he's got a Facebook channel, Robert Spetta, on Facebook, and then he's got a YouTube channel called West Pack. Uh, WX, so W-E-S-T-P-A-C-W-X, I believe is, is, is it, and he puts out some really good updates almost every day on the weather here, uh, and his, his channel has really grown over the last few years. I did notice uh, quite a few, quite a few um, uh, official government vehicles with their lights flashing going around. Uh, I don't know if they were checking to see if there was any flooding out or, or what the issue was or if they were uh, crime prevention uh, just to be be out there and be noticed. Um, generally the police vehicles drive around, traffic vehicles drive around with their lights flashing. One thing confused me at first, I, I told a taxi once, I said, you got a, a policeman's trying to pull you over, the guy behind you, his, his lights are flashing. And he said, no, 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 that, they always drive around with their lights going. 
So that, uh, that was a bit odd for me. And I said, well, how do you know when they want to pull you over? And well, they'll, they'll turn their siren on or they'll get on their loudspeaker and uh, ask you to pull over. I guess that's the deal. Couple guys playing chess there. I, uh, I come across a, a, a discussion last night and uh, somebody made the statement uh, that in, in America, in the US, people play checkers. Uh, in much of the world, they play, they play chess. Much more complicated, requires much more thinking ahead. If, if, if you move here, what happens? If you move here, what happens? Something that you should do if you're considering retiring uh, in the Philippines or as an expat anywhere. If you do this, then what happens? What happens with your life? What happens with your relationships back in your home country? And uh, my family pretty much supports what, what I've done, my choices. I don't get any pushback at all. But I've met many expats who tell me yeah, that that's a problem. My, you know, my my family they think I'm uh, I'm over here. Um, they think I'm crazy. You know, why are you in the Philippines? Why when are you coming home? We miss you, and you know can it can be a mental uh, challenge to have to put up with those kind of things. But to be fair, I know I, I played uh, chess many, many years ago and never was very good at it, but uh, they do play chess in the U.S. as well. Here is a general map of the uh, climates of the Philippines. They basically are four different types. Um, one thing this really doesn't show, though, is, is how the mountains really affect climate, because you've got mountain ranges uh, throughout many of the islands. And really, as you go up, you have big changes in your in your weather systems as you go up in elevation. It gets much cooler, of course. You've got the mountains, uh, the clouds blocked and, and the systems blocked by the mountains. I will link one of my weather climate uh, Philippine information videos at the end of this video in the last like uh, 10, 15 seconds or so. I always link uh, either playlists and or other videos. I believe this chart is from 2020, I believe, not positive. I pulled that off of Pagasa, the Philippine uh, uh, agency that tracks weather systems. And uh, in, in any way, it, it shows how it's affected, how they come. And a lot of them do uh, turn north. Some of them turn back, as you can see, turn back out into the ocean, go north, and even back uh, towards the east. These are clips of a video I did uh, several years ago about the weather and climate here, so I'll let you listen in here. Ocean currents and wind currents have a great effect on uh, the weather and climate around the world, obviously. This area is considered the uh, Philippines' area of responsibility when tracking typhoons and storms. Typhoons uh, do not uh, follow the rules, but in general, typhoon belt runs from the Philippines up to Taiwan. Uh, the season uh, generally lasts from July to October, although there's even been typhoons in December. Uh, on average, uh, the Philippines gets uh, nine uh, landfalls of typhoons each year. Uh, most of those hit uh, the, the Luzon, the Northern Islands, and the Eastern Visayas. In 1993, 19 typhoons made landfall. In several years, including 1992-1997, only four typhoons uh, hit the Philippines. 2013, six uh, hit uh, landfall in the Philippines, including the huge Yolanda. Uh, here's a comparison putting Yolanda in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this is another picture of a, of a, of a large super typhoon. We only experienced a little bit higher uh, breezes and winds here in Cebu City last year during the various storms. This is the type of storm warning you will see uh, when storms approach the Philippines. With so uh, many islands, uh, over 7,000 islands, um, much of the travel between islands takes place on boats, ferries, uh, that type of thing. and. Uh, in, I believe it was 2013, a large ferry capsized in a large storm, and uh, I think over 100 people uh, lost their lives. Uh, 
since then, they no longer allow the ferries to leave uh, during storms. Somebody makes that determination. A couple more points I want to make. Uh, most of you already know uh, some of this, but uh, the, the Philippines lie very close to the equator uh, in Cebu City here. We're about 10 degrees north of the equator. We're basically uh, in, the, in a hot and humid uh, climate area. This video clip I think was from 2017, some years ago it was a nice ride. I think I was on my way to Dumaguete, uh, about, about a five and a half hour uh, ship ride on a Cochleon uh, ship. Left on a Sunday, most of, the, most, most of those ships leave on a, uh, used to leave on, uh, at midnight and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to see the sights going down. Anyway, back there at the White Tower, uh, SM Seaside, and we're leaving Cebu City. Anyway, presently it is, uh, it is cloudy and rained off and on, rained pretty hard for a while again. And uh, so you will have more flooding, more landslides. Uh, keep that in mind when you decide where you're going to live up, on the, up in the uh, foothills or on the side of a mountain or at the base of a mountain or <laughs> next to a volcano, uh, the tall volcano up in Batangas, south of uh, Metro Manila has been puffing out some stuff again here lately. A uh, number of uh, earthquakes and Pinatuba a number of months ago that started shaking and rattling a little bit again. Uh, so consider those risk factors, uh, floods, volcanoes, uh, all that type of thing. There are quite a few ferries that uh, have come off the water. Well, not, not off the water, they're still in the water, uh, sitting in the bay, sitting at ports and piers, in safe harbors, uh, so, to, so to speak, what they call safe harbors, hopefully. Uh, so they're not out in the heavy seas, and I see more ships also. Uh, anyway, thanks for coming along. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time.